Hello, I'm going to be talking and demonstrating for the rest of this video. The reason I didn't initially is because resource nodes are hard to demonstrate and explain, which is why I wanted to get that over with through writing. And the reason I'm making this video is because people won't stop falling for noob traps. And I believe the biggest noob trap for Blob is the electromagnetic web strain. The first issue with it is Blob already struggles against lasers and this strain sacrifices so much and does nothing against it. So here's me being generous and shooting at it relatively up close, and you'll see that it only uses up one or two charges of my laser gun. I'll admit this strain does counter silicons and augmented people and androids, but it's at the cost of making it weak to literally everyone else in the game. This strain is weak against brute damage, so literally anyone and everyone can just grab a tool box or other blunt object and start beating it. Not to mention the vast majority of simple mobs do damage this way. And here's a strain without special resistances to compare. As you can see, a single player is going to struggle to hurt a blob that's not even playing as long as the blob is not picking a bad strain. All those special weapons and equipment still hurt. Other forms of burn damage, like from welders, will also hit a lot harder than you'd expect. But why is that? Most generic blob tiles have 50 laser armor and no melee armor. Instead of having melee armor, most blob strains actually have a 0.25 brute damage mitigation. You can guess which strain doesn't actually get that. A better way to deal with silicons, androids, and crowds of people, and even golems and simple mobs is to just go react its As you can see, Reactive Spines is pretty decent at defending itself against a single person, but it only gets better from there. The reason why Reactive Spines is so goaded is because its reactive attacks hit in an AoE around itself. This means it's literally impossible for a bunch of people to stack on top of each other or near each other and try to dig to your core. Instead, they actually have to respect your size, and they have to attack you from multiple angles, trimming off every tile that you have in order to get to your core. Okay, so now that we talked about countering silicons and hordes of simple mobs and titers and golems, let's talk about countering lasers. Now there's no way around it, you have to go this strain to counter lasers, and by extension burn damage in general. Purple Cannon Phone doesn't just counter burn damage, it's buffed by it, and it doesn't pay anything for that. It takes something that isn't niche, an entire damage type, and it makes you pretty much immune to it. One other thing I've noticed about Purple Cannon Phone is it has a side effect of making your strong and reflective blob tiles a lot more valuable. Strong and reflective blob tiles are not only immune to fire damage, but when they split, they also generate full health tiles. Another reason why this blob type is so good is it only takes one noob to do something like this in order for everyone to lose a position from which they're sieging it. On the flip side, don't go blazing oil ever because it only takes one fire extinguisher to do this. Don't think strong block tiles will protect you either. They can block Atmos, but they can't block water for some reason. Each time you manually expand a tile, it costs you 4 resource points. A blob node only costs 12.5 times that. And since it quickly generates tiles, it'll actually pay for itself really quickly.
attention. So it only took a little over 40 seconds to pay for itself, which isn't very long even on the front line as a blob. As for the factory blob, as long as you're remembering to utilize it, I would say it would actually pay for itself fairly quickly because each spore is arguably worth at least two resources. A spore getting hit by a single laser and dying is actually a good thing because that laser would have otherwise two shot another blob tile. Not only that, but the clouds that spores leave behind when they die generally confuse people a lot. And a lot of times they'll hesitate to keep attacking your tiles, which buys valuable amounts of time. If you're playing as a blob blob or not, your job is to do everything but die. Having enough blob or nots alive at once is actually a win condition for a blob. Blobber nuts only need to mitigate the damage that the blob is taking by taking turns, taking shots, and then going back to regenerate. Since blob tiles are regenerating and they don't die as quickly because the blobber nut is taking turns getting hit and also regenerating, it ends up getting really powerful really quickly. Especially while all this is happening, your blob core and nodes are all generating more tiles and replacing what ones you do lose. The only catch to this is blobber knots are very expensive and if you lose their factory you also lose the blobber knot as the blobber knot will no longer be able to regenerate which is why you should always place factories that you intend to generate a blobber knot from next to your nodes or your core since your nodes and core will be more capable of defending them for you i hope this information helps you in your endeavors of playing as a discord mod or blobber kitten thanks for watching